Chapter 4, You Fool. Gwen and I talk a lot, especially on the phone. Since the first of this year, 1979, I spent more time talking with her than I've spent in total with all my lovers. Of all the women I've ever known and not fucked, Gwen is my favorite. My feelings for her have become deep, and my attraction is obvious. I think my strong attraction and feelings for her are why she asked me to meet her earlier today by Stowe Lake in Golden Gate Park. Whatever the reason, I was glad. I saw Gwen approach from the south end of the lake. Due to the whiteness of her skin, she chooses to remain largely covered during the sunniest portion of the day. She said she has enough freckles already, and I told her that was complete nonsense. But today, a gloriously warm day in mid-April, she granted me the privilege of seeing her in a black tank top and blue jeans. She had a black sweatshirt tied to her waist, and she was braless. Her luscious strawberry hair was long, wavy, and without binding. She wore black high-top converse. She had to be the sexiest woman on the planet. I double-checked my left front pocket for condoms and tried to subdue both an erection and an impulse to leer. Stop staring at me, you fiend. Sorry. She leaned over and gave me a full lip smooch. I was surprised. Our lips had not touched before. That was nice. Yes, it was. So, my place is yours. Is there ever a time you're not ready to pounce? Of course. Foreplay is fun too. I'm sorry. It's just, you look great. What's on your mind? I knew from an earlier phone conversation that she had things she wanted to say and issues she needed to discuss. But I also knew she would not be pressed. She would bring things up or not as she saw fit. This was one of the more interesting, alluring, and maddening things about Gwen. She was in charge, not me. Things would go only as far as she would allow. I've never been attracted to a woman so strong-willed. But her strength was a complete turn-on. Seriously, have you ever not been able to get it up? This is what you want to know? Uh-huh. Well, then, the answer is yes, one time. Thanks for reminding me. What happened? Actually, it was pretty understandable. I'd been drunk the night before, and then I beat off three times the next morning because I didn't think I had any prospects for the day. <laughs> but lo and behold, I ran into the roommate of a friend, a woman I'd flirted with on more than one occasion. I was walking down, uh, I was walking along Ocean Beach, and I saw her walking toward me from below the cliff house. We talked for a bit, and then suddenly found ourselves in lip lock. She said it was too far to my house, and there were too many people at her house, so... We walked up Geary and checked into the Seal Rock Inn. But try as I might, God knows. Try as she did, I just couldn't keep it up. It was like a leaky balloon. As soon as she blew it up, away it would go. She blamed herself, I blamed myself, and it was all very embarrassing. <laughs> so what did you do instead? Did you stay there or go home? We stayed. Talked. I got her off and she tried me again to no avail. Eventually, we fell asleep. I'm glad you didn't leave, that at least you stayed and were intimate. Well, of course. I mean, we paid for the night. <laughs> and I knew all I needed was a little sleep, and I'd be good to go. <laughs> In the morning, we fucked so hard we could hear the maids laughing next door. That's such a sweet and romantic end <laughs> to the story. I'm so happy you finally... Wait a minute. Do you have condoms in your pocket? Would you rather I not have condoms in my pocket? I would rather you not presume you'll have reason to use them today. I always carry condoms unless I know for sure the woman I'm with is on the pill. I don't want any little days at this point in my life. I'm not ready for that. This stopped Gwen in her tracks, in part because I said it with such force, and mostly because she knew it was the truth. But Gwen, you can't blame me for hoping. I just don't want to be one more conquest for you. I don't want to be anyone's conquest, male or female. That's happened to me. I don't like how it feels. Don't get me wrong. I think about you. I probably think about you more than anyone I've met so far. I think about you when I'm alone. I want you to know that. I wish you'd do something about it. That's why I'm here today. 
Dave. I could feel the heat rising up on my neck. I think about you when I'm alone too, Gwen. But it's more than that. I like you. I'm really glad to hear you say that. But Dave, I know you. You're not ready for commitment. Who said anything about commitment? How about just spending some time together? Seeing how we are together. We could exchange St. Christopher medals, you know, go study or something. Let's buy clothes for each other. Watch how we chew, get drunk, take long walks, especially in the rain. She was blushing. I thought, oh, holy shit, she likes me. At that very instant, I became scared. I knew I could push it. I knew I could probably have her, perhaps that very hour, but my lust was gone and quickly replaced by fear. Gwen was right. I wasn't ready, and not just for her. I wasn't ready for anyone, and certainly not a woman as strong and as sure as Gwen. I didn't even know who the fuck I was. But there was one thing all wrong with the moment. Gwen, it shouldn't be this complicated. Our communication isn't complicated. This sex shouldn't be either. We both enjoy sex with other people for the pure sake of pleasure. We talk about it. So I can't understand why we haven't spent time together naked in the dark. We haven't even really kissed yet. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we did kiss. We kissed when I got here. Sorry, dear. That wasn't a kiss. That was a smooch. <laughs> well, I beg to differ. That was most certainly... I stand corrected. <laughs> so now? Well, I guess, like you said, my place or yours. I released her and retreated to a straight back position on the bench. <laughs> Neither. Let's go to Leon's on slope for some barbecue and then across the street to the zoo. What? I'm hungry. But Dave... No. We... You don't want to be a conquest, and I don't want to be a complication. Not right now, anyway. Let's just hang out today, have fun, and see where it takes us. <laughs> I don't know whether to be pleased or hurt. I hope you're happy we're friends. When did you become so mature? As soon as I realized that was the surest way to eventually get you into bed. There's my Dave. We had a great day together. One of the best times I've had with any woman to this point in my life. We ate and laughed and electrically touched from time to time. Though, for the majority of the day, the sexual tension between us was a pleasure and not a conflict. I think we both knew the reprieve wouldn't last, but we were grateful to spend today as close as two can be without expectation or consummation. At the end of the day, however, long after we'd gone our separate ways, I was alone in my room, and it was dark. I could have been with Gwen. Fuck, I could have had her. She offered, and she was ripe. I would still be with her right now, again and again. I wanted her with me so much. I pressed myself against the mattress and craved her. I was denied and almost asleep when the phone rang. David, are you thinking about me? Yes. Are you naked? Yes. Me too. You want to have sex with me right now, Dave? I'm on my way. No, silly. Right. Now. On the phone? <laughs> Are you a phone virgin? I'd rather be with you. You had your chance, you fool. Don't tell me that's going to be my only chance, Gwen. Who knows? But I wouldn't worry about that right now, Dave. I want you to listen to everything I say and do exactly what I tell you to. Trust me, we're going to be coming together.